Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Um, some more victims in Bakhmut, more volunteers, uh, foreign volunteers uh, died in Bakhmut. I think it was two days ago when that ex-Marine died. Um, uh, and now uh, we have two Canadians. Uh, one of them has, I think, a Ukrainian name. Doesn't really matter. These are volunteers. And as I said, we're going to see more and more volunteers uh, being reported dead. Um, because I have a little suspicion that the Ukrainian army will uh, have to rely on them, on them more and more. I also said on many occasions, without evidence, just a gut feeling, if you want to call it that way. And if you don't, I want to call it that way. Uh, and I think we men are also entitled to use uh, gut feelings. And um, I have a gut feeling that uh, the NATO will use some troops under the same uh, term or uh, name or disguise as volunteers. But hey, I don't have any evidence. Uh, it seems very strange that some of these uh, volunteers who get killed by the Russians uh, have obviously military experience, which uh, doesn't prove anything. It's just that uh, it seems like uh, uh, it's a pattern, but just have to. Uh, I had to point it out. Let's go to see this little article coming from uh, Ukrainska Pravda, and it says two volunteers from Canada killed in fights for Bakhmut. Well, you guys looked happy. Now, uh, hmm, that's the problem here. You are too happy, unfortunately, here. All right, I will uh, talk about this uh, at the end of this uh, video, probably. This article comes from May 1st, 2023. Canadian citizens, 27-year-old Kyle Porter and 21-year-old Cole Zelenko, were killed in the battles near Bakhmut on April 26th. Kyle Porter, a resident of Cagliari, and Cole Zelenko from St. Catherine's, have served in the Ukraine's International Legion, CBS New wrote. CBS News. CBS News, <laughs> which is a very, very free company, uh, wrote that the Canadian volunteers were killed by artillery fire on 26th of April while participating in a combat operation with a group of Ukrainian troops to maintain a key support route to Bakhmut. And I'm quoting. Porter, Zelenko, and at least three other Ukrainian soldiers sought shelter in a reinforced bunker, but the bunker took a direct hit. All were killed, end quote. Soldiers' commander told CBS News. It was noted that Porter and Zelenko previously served in the Canadian Armed Forces and retired before coming to Ukraine. Uh, you see this? Why don't you memorize this for me, my friends? Because, again, they all serve and they immediately did this and did that. I'm not saying it's impossible, uh, but it was another uh, Polish military that was, uh, I don't, he was not killed, but uh, he, I think, somehow, he was interviewed in uh, Ukraine. And uh, I think he said that uh, once he's done here in Ukraine, he will just go back uh, and um, serve, continue to serve in the Polish military. So I don't know, you take just a leave of absence and then you go back. I don't know how it works. I don't have evidence, but uh, look at me. 99% certain that after all this is done, after all this is done, and it will be done, we're going to have some uh, courageous people that will receive a green light of being allowed to publish uh, their findings and guarantee you 99.9% .9 that you will find out that yes, there were tra -la -la troops from uh, these countries disguised, you know, came legally as volunteers, but were from, you know, certain kind of regiments from their armies. Um, I have no evidence but experience and uh, logic and gut. So remember this one and uh, look for me when you find out uh, that because I'm going to find out that as well. And then we're going to have a talk about that. If you have any doubt or you think, hey, Emil, you're talking BS. So let's see what else is here. As CBS News reports, Zelenko's body was found and brought to Kharkiv, 
and Porter's body is still being sought. Wow, that means he was in pieces if he's still sought. Because they were in the same bunker, weren't they? So if he's still sought, they have to put him together. I mean, I'm sorry for being so graphic, but I think this is uh, the translation of that. As per CBS News' unofficial count, the volunteers are the fourth and fifth Canadians to be killed in Ukraine since the beginning of Russia's full-scale invasion. All right, well, again, if these guys left on their own uh, accord and they uh, decided to go over there for whatever reasons, you know, to defend Ukraine, freedom, democracy, love, and capitalism or whatever, uh, they went, uh, at least they went over there to fight for something outside of themselves, which uh, shows, uh, you know, something more than um, an egotistic uh, worldview, which is always something that I admire, sacrificing for a greater good. Uh, what I, uh, if they were part of the military, then it's a different story. They had to follow orders and probably they were asked if they want to go. I don't think they were just de deployed. I don't know how that works. But this is uh, one thing that I don't know if you were ever engaged in this kind of uh, uh, dilemma. When you are engaged in an activity that you are told that the activity is a positive activity, and after a few years, after all that ends, you find out that actually what you were engaged in was a negative activity, then what? I tell you what's going to happen. A lot of people who are weasels, and I don't think those guys were, the ones that you picture over there. Why do I say that? Um, I'm just uh, guessing by looking at their faces. I don't think they were weasels whatsoever. After a while, you kind of, uh, you know, uh, I'm generalizing. I'm, uh, you know, uh, leaving my mind uh, float too far away. Uh, after a while, you know, some people uh, find all kind of justification just because they don't want to think that they participated in something wrong. And some of them will live in denial and some of them unfortunately will get uh, in the uh, remorse department and uh, end up badly. I'm sorry for the two guys. I hope that they decided to go and participate as volunteers as the article and uh, CBS uh, report. Otherwise, I would be, uh, you know, um, Anyway, it's not my business actually because it's their lives and I'm always for humans deciding 100% what they do with their lives, good or bad, whatever they feel like. Uh, that's why I'm a, a supporter of uh, certain kind of behaviors and uh, practices like euthanasia and things like this. I'm for it uh, since it's my body, my choice, <laughs> I guess. But anyway, we have Kevorkian, Dr. Kevorkian here in, here in Michigan that, uh, you know, he got in trouble because he, you know, supported uh, people who or helped people who assisted people in, uh, you know, undergoing uh, euthanasia and all that, something like that. Anyway, uh, it's very strange that we are free, but we're not free to decide when we uh, end up uh, the social contract. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart. Look for the truth and be just.